this is Danny through Paisley Eyes. It's been a while. Welcome back to the channel. And today I am joined by a good friend of the channel, Ellie Beardsmore. Ellie, how are you, kid? I'm all right, thank you. Good. Thank you for joining us. It's Friday. Have you had a good week at work? Yeah, brilliant. Ready for the weekend? I am definitely ready to have a drink. Good girl, good girl. <laughs> so you, you've really been through it recently. Um just for the benefit of those watching this video who might not be familiar with Ellie's face, first of all, what's up with you? Um, secondly, Ellie's been all over the media this week, which is how I found her. Um, and you've really been through it, actually. So you've you've got a bit of a story to tell. So here's your moment, mate. Go for it. Tell us all about <laughs> it. What's been happening? Hello. Um, I'm 20 now. Um, so I'm quite young still. Um, and I lived with ulcerative colitis um, for about five years, undiagnosed, um, because I thought it was normal to pass blood when you went for a poo. Wow. So um, obviously it's not a thing that the GPs would think to diagnose. Um, obviously, I was really young. I just thought it was normal. They thought it was OK. And then things got worse this time last year. Um, so I caught COVID. That was the first thing. Um, symptoms started getting a lot worse to the point where I was passing a lot of blood to the point where it was really, really a lot of blood. It was making the toilet red. So couldn't see anything in the toilet but blood. Um, I then went back to the GP, got a referral waited for what you call a flexible sigmoidoscopy um which is basically a camera that goes at your bum see what your bowel's doing um and it came back that i had moderate ulcerative colitis so i was living with this for years obviously back in january last year um started going to the toilet more started going a few times a day thinking all right maybe this is my new normal um then all of a sudden it'd be 10 times a day 15 times a day 20 times a day so I lived and breathed on the toilet um yeah so basically then I was hospitalized because I was passing fleshy bits of bowel um and that is when I had a stoma bag so it's called a subtotal colectomy where I had my whole of my large bowel removed now I have an opening in my abdomen called a stoma where my intestine is pulled through um, and basically I go to toilet in a stoma bag wow <laughs> and wow okay so I tell you what let's let's try and chunk this a little bit talk yeah. to me about um ulcerative colitis what's ulcerative colitis and, and how does that obviously does it have any other impact on you other than the passing of blood through your stools? Yep. Yeah, so ulcerative colitis is under the umbrella of IBD. So it's this inflammatory bowel disease. You've got IBS and IBD. Um, IBD is severely worse than IBS. IBS is obviously terrible as well. Um, so under the category of IBD, you have Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So Crohn's disease is where it can affect your small intestine and large intestine. Ulcerative colitis is your large intestine. So with ulcerative colitis, in my case, I had ulcers in all over my large bowel. Um, and this basically wasn't absorbing any nutrients. Um, so whatever I was eating was coming out chewed. <laughs> you could see everything. It was horrible. Um, but with IBD comes fatigue because basically it's an immunosuppressant. So it so your immune system is so good, it's attacking itself, which means that actually your immune system for other bugs you get is completely suppressed. So I so I suffered with fatigue, um, ulcers in my mouth, um, obviously abdominal pain, blood in my stool, um a lot b12 deficiency i'm not sure if i mentioned that um yeah there was, there was a lot there was a real lot eczema even ties in with ulcerative colitis uh skin conditions so i have really combination skin um where i have eczema one week psoriasis the next week and then oily skin the week after wow now 
I mean, you're 20 years of age. How old were you from point of diagnosis? Were you 19, 20? I was 19 when I was diagnosed, yeah. So, and forgive me for saying this and generalising here, but we are now sort of living in an age where Instagram and social media is massive and a young girl like yourself, 20 years of age, you know, you, you're in a lot of cases, girls your age, uh, women your age, apologies, are are sort of body conscious and very very conscious about appearance and in some cases they've got lips on them like Donald Duck Ellie which still baffles me I still don't get it but um but at your age with 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 being so conscious uh, about your appearance and stuff like that this must have been like a real slap in the face when this happened um and at 19 20 years of age normally with a lot of conditions further on down the line these conditions tend to happen because of abuse of your body, because you've done too much hard partying, because you've touched too many drugs or too much alcohol or yeah. too much bad living. But at 19, 20 years of age, you're, you're still, you're a baby. I mean, how, how, how has this happened to you? It's crazy. Basically, um, it's genetics. So my granddad has unfortunately passed away now, but he had Crohn's disease. Um, so it skipped my dad, lucky for him, and it's came straight to me. Um, but we do have a lot of autoimmune disease conditions in our family. So my auntie has a blood one and um, I'm not sure if celiac disease is one. My uncle's got that all on my dad's side of the family. Um, and then his auntie had lupus as well. So kind of they have thing they've developed these things later on in life. It's caught me really early. Um, but I've never abused my body and that I did feel angry because people my age go out they smoke they drink excessively they do drugs you know and I think I haven't done any of that and this has happened to me but then I've tried to spin a positive on that and think you know it's come to me because I can help other people talk about their experience with IBD and their experience with stoma bags Bless you. I love that. I mean, and you know, for, for someone so young to be able to put a positive spin on it and to to have it in in the heart to want to reach out to other people and say, do you know what, this is all right. We can get through this. We can do this together. Mm-hmm. I, I I absolutely admire you for this. I've got to ask mm-hmm. you. I mean, obviously, you you will have had conversations with you with your folks about this, and you mentioned there that it it, it largely now is is a genetic pass down from your dad's side of the family. How's your dad been throughout all this? Because I bet, I mean, to see his look, his young girl, who's right at the opening of her life, should be, you know, running around the world and setting the world on fire. And you've you've yeah. been through all this. How, how's how's he dealt with it? Um, so I think he was in denial a little bit, um, which I think all parents are for a little bit because my mom and dad are really healthy. They're in the fifties, um, you know really like happily married you know had one child on their only daughter um so yeah I think my dad was in denial for a little bit he didn't think it was Crohn's he didn't think it was ulcerative colitis this was in my process of getting diagnosed when it came back as ulcerative colitis me and mom and dad we thought you know you can live on medication for years you know it's not going to result in surgery straight away and then obviously things got really bad and obviously having my surgery he was in denial for the first little bit but obviously it has upset him but men don't like to speak out they think it's weakness and absolutely that for me I think please just cry (laughs) I just want I know you want to let your emotions out so please do it because I've cried and I've laughed in the same five minutes um and I know my mom and dad feel exactly the same as me, but my dad doesn't like to let on. He does, tries to be strong for me, has helped some days, has frustrated me other days. But yeah. He loves you to bits, kid, and he's just yeah. obviously concerned. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, and And I, I absolutely back 100% what Ellie's just said there. To any of the fellas watching this right now, whether you have this condition, whether you don't, whether you have another condition or whatever, it really, really is important that we talk more because girls, or I keep saying girls, the ladies, the women of our world are far more above us, head and shoulders above us when it comes to having conversation and dealing with emotions. That's That's very true. Ellie, talk to me about the stoma bag. So what does the stoma bag do? I mean, 
and, and remind us as well what the, the, the acronym was for STOMA, sorry, what, what, what does that mean again? So a STOMA is basically, in my case, there are different forms of STOMAs. So um, you've got colostomy, urostomy and an ileostomy. You've also got a few more that are very rare, but um, so an ileostomy is what I have. So typically it's on your right hand side. Um, and that is when you've had your large bowel removed and it's your small intestine. So ileostomy is because my ilium, my, right, so there's an ilium inside your small intestine. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, get all scientific on me, I can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that my mind blows with it, but I've got so used to it now. Um, but basically there's an ilium that absorbs a lot of nutrients in your small intestine. So that is connected to your large intestine. So I've been cut at the just after the ileum where it absorbs all the good nutrients and that is pulled through so basically they cut my stomach pulled through my small intestine and so i've got like what looks like a little strawberry um and that is effectively a bum on my stomach that is my new bum um so yeah i basically it's like a dripping tap. That's the only way I can explain it. So I don't necessarily go to the toilet how normal people do, like once a day or twice a day. I just have this like dripping, dripping, dripping. Eat something, just slowly drips out throughout the day. Um, and with an ileostomy, you empty your bag. So I empty mine about three, four times a day. Um, really easy. There's a drainable thing on the pouch. Just put it into the toilet, you know, clean it, fold it back up and then you're done. Uh, I change my actual bag once a day, um, which is a lot more than other people do. But I just I've got into the routine of changing it once a day from in hospital. Um, so, yeah, so basically I'll go to the toilet into a bag on my stomach. Um, but it's actually a lot easier than going to the toilet usually. Yeah. This is brilliant. So. It's, it's randomly coming to my head. I'm going to ask the question. Yeah. You still go for a wee as normal? Yes. So yes. You're, you're in this uh, disposal and stuff like that still continues to be regular still as it continue. always was. Yeah. This is just mainly uh, now a, a substitute for um, stools, passing stools. Going for a poo. Basically a bypass. Wow. Amazing. And so you can still operate, should we say, in what would deem to be a normal life. So you can still go to work, you can still go to the cinema, you can still go to a nightclub and, and yeah. it's just that if you need to go to the loo or you need to change your bag, yeah, into the cubicle, lock it up, do what you got to do, back out, no one knows. Yeah. So basically, my kind of life, um, I can do absolutely anything. Been to water parks, been swimming in the pool, in the sea, been on jet skis. So I've really put my bag through the test. Because there really? is a stigma out there. You can't do this and you can't do that. And I thought, no. I, I was 19 when I thought this. I thought, no way am I, a teenager, not doing things in my life. You know, I chose my bag not to die. So I have my bag not to die. And that doesn't mean I'm not going to do stuff in my life. So I still go to work. I work for the NHS. They've been really good, as you can imagine. Um I still go out clubbing. I still go to the pub. All it is, is I put a fresh bag on before I go and I can go out for about 10 hours without even thinking of my bag because it doesn't fill up that quick. Because I'm not a massive eater. I have snacks. I'm a snacker. So I'm constantly snacking throughout the day. Um, but yeah, so I, I live a really normal life. I love this. I love this. And first of all, um, as someone who works for our NHS, thank you. We love you. We're sorry you're putting up with this government. Um, Ellie, I've got to ask you, so, and this has just randomly popped into my head. Women your age love a sunbed. Yes. Can you go under a UV bed with a stoma bag? I've been on today. <laughs> really? <laughs> I was going to say, see if you've been on holiday, because you're looking, you're looking a bit glam and a bit tan. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you can do absolutely anything. I fold mine up. Um. So basically, I just clip it up. I fold it in half because I wear a large bag on a day-to-day -day basis. Um. But large, the 
sound of large sounds very very big but it's not actually that big you just fold it up clip it at the top and absolutely fine it actually sticks better when you're abroad and when you're you know going on the sunbed and stuff so I'm always on the sunbed I just love it because it's really good for my skin and not to promote it but it is really good for my skin brilliant Ellie I've got to ask you you mentioned there about the size of the bag so are we talking mm-hmm. maybe the size of an iPhone or are we talking maybe the size of a money bag or or a packet of chocolate buttons what, yeah. what would you what would be the like for like um, well, I've actually got some behind me, if you want me to show you. Yeah, come on, show us one, let your case us. Yeah, let's do it. Just find one out. Okay. So, they come in all different colours. So this is a white one that I go with daily. I always wear a white one because I think it's lovely. So this bit folds up at the bottom, um, folds in on itself, and that's the adhesive at the back that Brilliant. sticks onto your stomach. So yeah, that's so that's a large. Okay. Uh, so half of that, half of that, like this. That is a mini bag. Brilliant. And would you would you wear a mini one, say, for going out of an evening, nightclub, romantic meal, something like that? Um, not necessarily. I stick to a large bag unless. Um, so like my partner's really used to it sort of thing like obviously he sees it every day it's just one of those normal things now um if I go on holiday some days I'll wear a large some days I'll wear a small depending on what bikini I'm wearing um obviously you can get medium bags as well so you can get a bit in the middle um, <laughs> if you don't want a large or a small but I tend to use a large just because if I go and eat something really spicy and it decides to be a bit more active for a couple of hours, um, I don't have to worry about it filling up. I can just carry on with my night. You can't see it under clothes, really. So I do. I just carry on with it. But yeah, on holidays, I sort of alternate between large and small, depending what I'm doing. It's almost like you've got the ultimate cheat, so you can actually go out and eat jalapeno peppers and stuff yeah. like that and not have to worry about it, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah, um, it's good. But no, thank you for sharing that with us. You mentioned there about your partner, Nath. Um, good guy. How long have you guys yeah. been together? Uh, it's Eith, sorry, not Nath. Eith, sorry, not Nath. Eith, sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. Eith, down wrong. Eith. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry, mate. <laughs> um, it's been really good with it. So in hospital, he came to visit me every day. Um, he's a lovely lad. We've been together. We've been together a year and a half before I got took ill. Obviously, the first six months, I was what I thought healthy, what he thought healthy. I suffered with headaches, tiredness, all that, deficiencies and everything. But I just thought it was me. I just thought, you know, I'm not eating properly. That is genuinely what I thought. But um, so obviously it all made sense when I got really ill that all these things kind of, that it made sense. They all tied in to my ulcerative colitis. Um, but it was really good when I was in hospital. I did say to him because obviously they told me we're going to have to do surgery. Nothing's working for you. Um, you're going to have to have a stoma bag. And I thankfully knew what a stoma bag was because of my granddad. Because uh, he had one as well. But obviously other people that don't have it in the family don't know. So I did say to him, you can leave me. I don't expect a 19 year old lad to want to be with me. You know, it's a lot. I don't know how I'm going to be post-surgery. I don't know whether I want to just crawl under the covers and not come out or if I'll be really excited to go out and once I've recovered and that. Um but no, he said, you know, my godfather's girlfriend um, has a stoma bag. I've been talking to him um, and he's been really supporting me. And he said, I really, I, we can make this work. Like, you know, you'll just be you. You'll just have a little addition. Um, and yeah, it's been absolutely great since I've been doing more. I haven't been headachy as I was. haven't been so tired. Um, I've been doing loads, going out, not worrying and so it's, it's had like a positive impact on our relationship, not a negative impact that you'd expect. Brilliant. And well done, Heath, for standing by your girl. Good man. And I'm sorry <laughs> once again that I got your name wrong. Um, <laughs> so I've got to ask you then, now, why, why have you decided to share your story? Why have you decided to be so open about this? Um, it's not really for my benefit, I find. 
it's because of my granddad because back when he had his which I'm gonna say was probably 2010 I'm gonna say um might have been a couple of years difference um these things weren't talked about and they have been doing stoma surgery since the 1800s and this thing still what? is stigmatized so yeah if people want to do the research on these things 1800 and they used um actually skin of an animal as a stoma bag to collect people's waste um obviously as years have gone on things have got better um but it's stigmatizing i don't it's not for me it's for the babies that are born with conditions and you know some are born without like a bum hole you know and it's really sad um but I, I want to do it for them because they shouldn't grow up in this stigmatized world of you know having a stoma and that i just think if i can at 20 think you know I'm living my normal life and I don't care and what people think of me I do not care because they're more tied up in their own lives and I want that to be for other people as well and I want them to not face any stigma at all. Brilliant I absolutely love that and <laughs> once again you know for anybody watching this this channel we're about breaking stigmas we've covered mental health we've covered black lives matter we've covered sexuality we've covered open relationships now Ellie comes to the table and brings and talks about something that's real life not what we're seeing you know dr dramatized on tv programs this is a young lady who's going through it who's bringing it to life and who's just said you know what we can live with this this is great yeah. What does the future look like for Ellie Beardsmore? What 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 you want to do with life next? What is this thing not going to stop you from doing next? Oh, honestly, it's not going to stop me doing anything. I've got loads of holidays in my head that I'm ready to book. <laughs> Literally, Brilliant. I'm just waiting for my boyfriend to say book it, and it'll be booked. Brilliant. So, what's the, what's really the dream holiday for next year? Where'd you fa for this year? Where'd you fancy going? Oh, well, I'm 21 this year, so I want to go to Barbados. So that's the dream um i really want to go there um and i'm sure my boyfriend does as well because he's 21 a couple of days before me so yeah that that's the dream place at the minute that i've got my eye on fantastic and just as a real random question i love to throw this one out every now and again your story ends up making it to an esteemed writer and they decide they're going to make a film about ellie beardsmore who would you have play you? Which actress would you have play you at the moment to tell your story? Oh, it's got to be one of my favourites. She is definitely a favourite of mine. Cameron Diaz. I think she's great. She's um, yeah, I think yeah. I think she'd play a really good part in it. Yeah, and you've both got that glow about you with them amazing <laughs> teeth. So, yes, I can see this happening. <laughs> Uh, listen, thank you so, so much no for um, spending some time with us to, to talk about this um, incredible subject. I mean, the knowledge that I, I've picked, 1800s, they were doing this stuff. Who knew? I didn't know. <laughs> um, and, and yet something that is because it is major surgery, isn't it? How many hours were you on the surge in, 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 in theatre for? Four and a half. Four and a half hours. So it's it's yeah. a big op, and yeah. especially for someone so young as well. Um, I think I think what you're doing is amazing. Um, keep smiling. Get to Barbados, Eth. You're gonna have to get your hand in your pocket here, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, but now I wish you guys all the very very best for your futures. Stay Thank healthy. You. El, if anybody wanted to um, reach out to you to have a little chat with you about it, obviously. <laughs> Feel free to message me out and pass the message on as well. But if they wanted to speak to you directly, can they do that? Yep. So I have got a, a Stoma Instagram in Instagram account. So it's Elle's Stoma Journey. Um, and I have people message me from all over the world saying, you know, how do you get on with your Stoma? You know, how do you deal with things? And I just, you know message them back it's become a daily thing now I've got about 20 people that I message a day um which is really lovely and you can connect with so many people that have gone through similar things brilliant well look you keep kicking walls down kid because I think what you're doing is amazing keep breaking that stigma and keep keep sharing the love with these people from all around the world where's the most random place that you've had somebody message you from so far um I've had Brazil I've had Canada oh. as well um Crazy, I've had Australia, USA, 
Um, actually, in the USA, they don't have white and black bags. Okay. Um, so I'm actually sending a lady um, some white and black bags to USA. I because love I thought, that. Yeah, so because I felt I feel really awful for them not having white and black bags. I know that sounds really stupid in the grand scheme of things. Um, but yeah, the supply doesn't reach there, so I'm gonna send her some over. So what do they have in the States? Are they just having clear bags? Are they transparent bags or so they're like a stone colour? Um oh. have got some oh if you can see all the boxes behind me, these are all the stone bags I've got. I have got some somewhere, but uh yeah, they have like stone coloured bags, so I particularly wear white and black, match them with my clothes, match them with my bikinis. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, and it just gives you that extra bit of confidence because I think stoma bags are so like seen as like a nudie, you know, stone colour that people easily recognise them. But when you've got a white and black one on, they think, oh, I wonder what that is. Yeah. And that gives you the opportunity to have those conversations and to continue breaking the stigma. Yeah. Fantastic, Els. Listen, lovely Thank to you. speak to you. Thank Take you. care and um, happy 21st for later on in the year. Thank you. <laughs>